Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Well, as you can see, I had to bribe Dimey to stay in the room with me for a little bit so you guys could watch him do that. <laughs> and off he goes. That time I kicked someone in the crotch over TCP IP. I work as a senior software engineer at a small software company. Being a small company, I wear multiple hats. I handle gathering requirements, developing software, project development, and post-deployment support. The whole life cycle. One of the software packages I'm responsible for is our point-of-sale software that integrates with our company's flagship software package. As it is my software, I handle new deployments and support cases for this product. Many of our clients prefer us to remote into their POS terminal to solve issues rather than coming on site. This saves them a call out fee, so they're happy enough to have someone on hand to help with anything that can't be done remotely. Mostly this involves hardware testing. Okay, scan a barcode. That scanned? Good. Did the receipt come out? Does it look right? You know the drill. One of our clients was having issues with their receipt printer and cash drawer. This hardware was very old and updates to the POS software had caused a compatibility issue with their hardware drivers. Luckily updating the hardware driver package for the receipt printer and cash drawer and setting the devices up again resolved the issue. I was on the phone with one of the store clerks for this particular client, testing out the hardware. We just tested the receipt printer which printed perfectly. Final thing to test was the cash drawer. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Me. Okay, that's working. Now we're going to test the cash drawer. I'm going to kick the drawer and you tell me if it opens or not. Clerk. Okay. Me. Clicks button. Random customer. Excuse me. Cash drawer. Ka-chunk. Clerk. Oof. As soon as I clicked the no sale button, a customer tried to get the attention of the clerk at the terminal. The cash drawer popped and the clerk turned towards the customer and caught himself right in the edge of the drawer as it was springing out. <laughs> Me. Well, that sounds like it worked. And that's how I literally kicked someone in the jimmy over the internet. That sounds like a feature that could be really handy at times. Guess he's had enough. Luckily, we've got more. A bit of a missile problem. Way back when a friend worked in support for a large aircraft slash missile manufacturer, since gone and absorbed, one of their products was a harpoon missile designed to attack ships. One Scandinavian country owned some, and in this specific case had a shore-based installation. These things needed periodic maintenance. Among other things, you ran a fake launch and it would fly, quotes, to its target. You could see fins move and monitor the intervals and such. Two guys were working on it. They turned the key and the thing fired off. One of them was even standing on it. Holy cow. So now you've got this unguided missile roaring through the harbor full of ships. Somehow it managed to miss everything and make it five miles inland before it hit a house. Nobody was injured. What they wanted from my friend was, did it fly straight or did it do the plunging top kill like it was designed for? Wish I could get more clarifications from him, but I've not talked to him in 30 years. They ended up being fined $40,000 for insufficient documentation. So they wanted to know if it killed the house right? I'm assuming? I know this was a long time ago, but they only got fined $40,000 for that? That seems just ludicrous to me. I know mistakes happen, but come on. Something, something, turn it off and back on again? Just had this call yesterday. Me, thank you for calling Redacted Technical Support. This is Dolan Upvote. How can I help you? User, yes, I'm having issues launching my Outlook. I tried restarting my computer a few times before calling you and it still won't load. For context, our workplace sends our employees some of the lowest spec computers, so you pretty much need to restart it daily or things start to become unusable. Me. That does sound like a problem. Alright, let me get remoted in with you and I can take a look. Fast forward getting their IP and getting connected. Me. Okay, I see your screen now. Do you mind if I take control for a moment? User. Go right ahead. First things first, open up Task Manager and check the system uptime. Three days without a restart. Me. Hmm, okay. I know you just restarted, but let's try to restart one more time while I got you on the phone, just in case. User. 
Oh, all right, I guess. I can go ahead and click on the start and then click restart. A little bit later, the customer's computer comes back up and I remote back in. Me. All right, let's try to start Outlook one more time. Outlook opens with no issue. User. Oh, it seems to be working now. Me. Weird. Well, you give us a call back if that issue reappears, okay? User. Uh, okay, thank you. Click. Fun times. So basically what I'm gathering from this is the user really didn't restart his computer. He thought he did, maybe. Must be the old, uh, my monitor is my computer. Hit the button, it goes off. Hit the button again, it comes back on kind of deal. Especially if it showed three days uptime. Keyboard Warrior Princess. Bad's Lady Part 2. So it started as a normal day. I was just going about business as usual when I got a message from a guy who works near Badge Lady from a previous post of mine. He tells me her spacebar is broken and asks if I can supply her with another keyboard. I said sure, no problem, as we have dozens of them. They wear out and get replaced from time to time, no biggie. I grab one that's in decent condition and head on over. They both greet me and he gives me a weird look and says, here's the old one, and hands me a keyboard with a literally broken spacebar as in a spacebar key actually broken in half. I say, oh, okay, so it's actually broken. I ask her how that happened. She says, I don't even know. It just broke somehow. I don't even know when it broke. <laughs> okay, sure. The other guy cracks a few jokes about her typing too hard and we all have a few laughs about it. She obviously knows how it broke and while I generally don't care about these kind of things, I can't help but wonder what the heck she did to that keyboard. She's also broken a calculator, a mouse, the multiple badges in my previous post here, and a laminating machine. Now I recall another keyboard she spilled soda on when I first started. I've worked at the company for about two years. I forward the info up the chain when stuff breaks, but no one seems to notice that most of the hardware that breaks around here can be traced back to one person, or if they do, they don't care. After actually listing everything that she's broken in the last two years that I'm aware of, since I've been here, I'm starting to get really curious as to what actually goes on in that part of the office. Kind of sounds like this lady just takes everything in her life out on her equipment. Or your equipment. I know people like that. They get ticked off, and for the rest of the afternoon, they slam doors, slam keyboards, uh, phones, you name it. All except for their own personal stuff. Wow, he's not running away from the camera. Nice. Vibe testing the beast. I remember staring, wrapped, over my father's shoulder as he used the solder gun in the back of our TV in 1962. I've been in tech support since age five, whether I know what I'm doing or not. So now I'm standing in a ring of big brains and extremely capable experts the day before we put a defense department apogee engine into risk. Tell me if I said that wrong. Apogee? Anyway. My boss stood across the ring from me. He taught me how to protect a thruster during the vibe operations. I knew he had my back. Hell, he taught me how to cryopress the four Teflon valve seats and let me hand wind the four valve solenoids that were attached in series feeding the 200 pound thrust engine. The boss had trained me to perfection on those processes. I was the last asked to speak during this meet. Two Fochi, Faki, FOCI for these critical vibe runs. The vibe commander must conform to the vibe profiles, sign, random, etc. While I will be hand placing $2 million onto the vibe fixture, then vibe commander and I binding dozens of bolts to 55 foot pounds, then hooking up pressure, then measuring pressure using very old Apollo era leak detection technology. This was going to be very difficult inside the vibe containment. Not much space to set up the sight glass slash gas board as they called it back in the last century. I'm so scared of what may go wrong as I might be the obvious cause. I'd heard they want to hook up equipment I had not used before. I said I don't feel good about hooking up this brand new untested gear to flight hardware. Then I said I need to be trained how to operate this valve control box. Nobody contradicted me. Customer program manager had audited our vibes for his other goodies before. He stood up for me and said, we shall do these extra steps. Then we made another good one. Vibe Commander and me, we passed the three day vibe with excellent help from customer program manager. If you got any of that, fill us in down below.
Okay, so I'm getting that it's vibration testing dynamics. Or vibration dynamics testing. Some sort of flight hardware and they're doing vibration testing to make sure it doesn't fall apart in flight. I don't know. Still fill me in down below. Laptop webcam. Please fix. We live in a day and age now where online meetings have become commonplace. In the before times, my company was just beginning its transition to Teams, and that was quickly expedited as we started to work from home. Of course, everyone and their mother needed a webcam because God help us if we can't see someone in a meeting. From what I understand, if you aren't on webcam, you don't exist and can't contribute, or something like that. Given the severity users seem to treat camera issues with. Whatever. I soldier on. Continue my duties, including new hires during the pandemic. Eventually bring on two laptop users, one of which is the user in question. I give them their ThinkPads, give them the IT walkthrough, explain all the usual stuff to them, etc, etc. No problem. They seem competent. Eventually I get a ticket from HR. User's webcam is broken and doesn't work. Please repair immediately. Alright, fine. Whatever. It's not critical, but I'll get pestered endlessly until I at least address this one. I connect with user's PC and camera isn't working as expected. Driver updates, all the usual, nothing at all. Doesn't even show black, just doesn't appear to be there. So I get an idea. Me. User, is the cover over the webcam? User, no, no cover. Me, do you see a little slide there at the top? User, no slide, no cover, sorry. I'm sure you can guess where this is going. He deals with it for a little while until we can both be in the office. He calls me over, and as soon as I see the laptop, I see the slide is in fact there and over his camera. I slide it open and walk away to sounds of astonished thanks. <laughs> ThinkPad camera covers aren't just covers. They hard disable the webcam when in place. I'm assuming from the way he made this story sound that he went over all this with them in the beginning. I know some people have short attention spans, and I'm one of them, but seriously. If somebody asked me if there's a slide on the top of the laptop lid, I'm pretty sure I would be able to notice that there was a slide cover of some sort. Tech support is blind. I'm the family tech support for my parents. My dad is blind and my mom needs to explicitly be told to press the button that says continue or enter when trying to use a new app. My dad has a website for his law practice. I've done light work over the past decade to help him keep his website up to date. His hosting service offered him a deal where he can get a new website package at less than current monthly cost, which means he just needs to migrate over the content, which means I need to migrate over his content. Rather than try to find the information I need in his emails, he figured it would be easier for me to log into his email and get the info myself. It was not. I tried to log into his Gmail on my computer. This device is not recognized. It prompted me to confirm from his phone that I'm allowed to access his email. Of course, I don't have his phone with me. I called him, told him about the security measure and what he had to do. I had to explain about five times why having his username and password wasn't enough and that he had to verify I wasn't a hacker. He doesn't get it, but he gives my mom his phone to figure out what to do. I tell them multiple times, download the Gmail app, open the app, press the yes prompt that pops up, then enter the number XX. This turns into a screaming match between my mom and dad. The night is ruined, and I give up for the night with no access to his email. The next day I decide to try again. He asks me to walk him through what to do again, and I tell him I literally can't walk him through any clearer than I did last night. He says his clerk is able to help him today, and is more technically proficient than mom. Low bar. I text him a screenshot of the instructions. He asks me to text it to his clerk. Me, I don't have your clerk's number, just show it to her on your phone. Dad, I can have her send you a text so that you have her number and can text it to her. <laughs> Me, just show her your phone. Dad, she's home sick today, but I can have her text you and you can tell her the instructions. Me, um, then she can't help you today. She can't help if she doesn't literally have your phone in her hands. I give up on getting into his email and decide to try a different approach. Let's just see if I can log into his website portal. I have the URL for the portal, but need his new credentials, so I give him a call. Me, trying to log into your website, but I don't remember your password. Dad, it's 12345678. Me, 
That didn't work. Okay, so I'm putting in username XXX pass dad. No, they changed how you log in. Me, okay. So what's the username? Dad. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> me. Then what's the password? Dad. I don't have a password. They told me I can change it. Me. Banging my head against the desk until I die. Then I need access to your email. I can't change your password without getting into your email. He wanted to try resetting his password himself, so I left him to it. But it's been 20 minutes and I haven't heard back yet. As frustrating as it is doing tech support for my parents, I'm honestly really annoyed with Gmail for making it so difficult for a person with disabilities to get into their account, or technically have someone else get into their account to assist them. I tried alternative methods to recover his email account, but it literally won't let me in any way without having access to his phone. And he can't do the phone part without help. I'm sure he's as frustrated as I am. Yeah, that's gotta be extremely frustrating. I can't even imagine dealing with that, being blind. I, I can't imagine losing any of my senses. Uh, I'm slowly losing my hearing, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to at least keep some sort of hearing, even with devices later on. Uh, to be totally blind though, and dealing with all this crap, I'm just not sure. Well, me and Nickel over there appreciate you guys hanging out with us tonight. If you appreciated these stories in any way, do me a favor. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fat guy and a few random animals telling you stories. See ya!